Some people wait a lifetime for a moment like this. And you're welcome. Well, hello, beautiful people. Welcome back. So let's go ahead and uh, we're just going to jump right into the video and start talking about it because this is the type of video I never thought like I would do. Like I just never thought it would be in my wheelhouse. But the other day I was talking to my friend Teresa. You guys, of course, know her as Teresa is dead here on the wonderful world of YouTube. And uh, we were talking about tag videos, actually, because she had just done her palette tag video. And we were talking about how we both like to do them and how it's just a fun way to talk about makeup, but it's a little bit different. And you know, as the conversation progressed, we were both kind of like, man, you know, I wish that there were more we could do. And it didn't take very long for me to realize like, Paige, wait a second. Why don't you just ask questions? Like, why don't you just, why don't we just do this? And so before I know it, you know, me being the Libra that I am, I recede from the conversation and eventually reemerge like 20 minutes later. And I send her a list of questions that I've been writing on my phone. And I'm like, Hey, Teresa, you gotta be honest with me. Do you think these are stupid? <laughs> like, is this something that you could actually see being a thing? And of course, you know, her being her, she's like, well, first, of all, <laughs> of course, I'd be honest with you. I'd tell you if it was stupid. And I don't think that these are stupid. Like, I actually think these are pretty solid questions. And so I kind of, you know, I went back through, reformulated, I gave it a title and all the little things. I guess the moral of all of this and what I've been trying to get to this entire time, I, with the help of Teresa, I wrote a tag video and I'm so freaking excited. Like, I just, I'm excited because when I like to talk about makeup and I like to talk about, you know, products and things like that, for me, it isn't always just about like, is it good? Is it not? Like, it's not always that cut and dry. Sometimes it's about the journey of getting to the product and how it makes you feel or why you bought it or like why it means something to you. And when I, you know, kind of was going through and writing these questions, I wanted to answer those types of things, but also put like a fun little spin on it. So now with all of this being said and being overly explained, everything from tractors and shoe sizes aside, I would like to bring to you guys my tag video for which I have titled Makeup Marvels. <laughs> and I am going to read these to you exactly as I have them written, mainly because I just want you to have like a piece of me as you watch this video and I want you to hear exactly what I write because I mean personally I think I think it just really drives home my, my thought process so question number one there are eight questions total um, question number one is lady prime because of course we are talking makeup marvel so I had to give them each a cute little name it's just what I do so number one lady prime a primer that actually works and I'm leading in with this one because I think for me this is a very soft open kind of question you guys know me and if you watch my channel there is one one primer that I talk about all the time. It's the one that I use almost every single day, today included, and that would be none other than my Tatcha Silk Canvas. So to go through this product specifically, because I have talked about it so, so much, you know, in the past and in other videos and whatnot, um, I'm going to give you guys just my bullet points and why I really enjoy it and why I feel like this primer for me is the primer that really does work. And it delivers on what it says it will do. So the first thing that I really enjoy about this is the smoothing aspect of it. I enjoy that it's a um, I, I almost treat this, and this is going to sound really bad, but I almost treat this as more like a caulk, like something that kind of fills in my crevasses, my pores, my situations, if you will. And it really just goes in and it lightly smooths, but it does it without giving me any sort of finish. Like there isn't a matte side to it. It doesn't peel up. It doesn't make my skin dewy. It doesn't make it, it doesn't make it look any kind of way. It just lightly goes in and helps to smooth everything out. But it also does it in such a way that it looks very natural underneath of my foundation. Like it doesn't, it doesn't make my skin look like it's overly done. It's overly smooth. It's been airbrushed, you know, oh my God, it's perfect. But it does just such a beautiful, natural job at, at neutralizing the pore aspect. And again, the crevasses of my face, which I really, really like. And it's something that as I've drifted more towards like what I would call natural-esque makeup or more light to medium coverage makeup, um, it's something that I just, I appreciate so much more because when you're going in with less products and ultimately, you know, you're, you're doing a little bit less, it's nice to have a a product that still helps but doesn't correct all the way if that makes sense like it's it's just nice to have that which I really like so for me that's probably the number one reason and the second thing about this and the thing that I would say arguably gets overlooked the most is the fact that this doesn't have with it like any weird kind of a finish like it doesn't lean matte it doesn't lean dewy it doesn't like alter the finish on the skin in any way so I know that I can use this product along with any foundation and I'm gonna be able to get the finish I'm looking for from that specific foundation with 
without there being any like interference like I'm not putting a matte foundation on something that leans dewy or you know vice versa it's just a nice neutral primer it still does what I need it to do but it does it in a way that all of my other products to follow are still able to be embraced and to do what I want them to do which is is what I personally really like about it all right so from there we're moving on to makeup marvel number two and this one is entitled the ripen hype now the ripen hype is makeup that was actually worth it or of course was worth the hype and this one for me was really difficult to land on one specific product because like truthfully as you guys know I've been a review channel for so long and I love testing things out whether they're new hyped somewhere in between it doesn't matter I just love testing out makeup and so for me when I went to answer this question specifically I had to kind of go back to the reason I wanted this tag to be a thing and the reason that I asked these questions because I feel like as someone like whenever I go through to do a tag video I find one yes I'm so excited I feel like by the end you know by the time I get to doing it all of the questions that have answered I just feel like my answers would be so similar and like I just I don't want to create a video for you guys where you've seen the same answer you know 15 times from other people because for a lot of us we do have you know the same makeup stash whether it's palettes foundations blushes whatever and I wanted something that would be a little bit different and so I thought okay you know what what is different for all of us and that would be our experiences basically what made a difference for us in our makeup routine or in the way that we see makeup and so that's how I approached this question because there is a lot of hyped makeup that I have loved that I have tried over the years but one product for me really did stand out as a product that I have used a ton and that I really love but it was super hyped and I was very apprehensive because I didn't think it would be worth the hype and that is the Catrice Dewy Glow Setting Spray and you guys this oh my god like I can't tell you how much because this was so hyped you guys like it was so hyped let me I'll put it this way it was so hyped that I actually had to be on the waiting list at Ulta to be able to buy it because it was sold out everywhere. Like I literally couldn't find this at any drugstore. I couldn't find it online. Catrice's website didn't have any. It was gone. Okay. This was the most sought after thing. And I believe it was, I want to say Taylor Wynn that, that came up with this, that Taylor on YouTube. Um, she, well not came up with it, but she was one of the people that advocated like you guys, this stuff is a game changer. And I still, I was just like, no, it's not going to be good for me. No, I have combo skin. I have oily skin. I'm not going to like that. If you are somebody that you remember that time in YouTube where this is all anyone could talk about oh my god like I am absolutely obsessed with this like, I literally use it every single day I used it today getting ready this is a dewier setting spray so it does lean a little bit more you know in that direction it's not gonna leave you matte it's not gonna even leave you satin I would say it's a little bit more than satin but one of the things that I really appreciate about this is that it doesn't just blast you in the face with like this um, with this overwhelming dew or an oil or like this weird film or anything it actually has a beautiful like what I, what I call a water weight like it feels like a nice spray it feels like a heavier spray but it goes into your skin and it just so beautifully presses all of the layers of my makeup together and it has truly been one of the most no you know what I'm gonna I'm gonna put it on a record books this is probably the most hyped product that I have tried that I have ever felt like wow like that is for sure 100% worth the hype and I've tried like I said I've tried a lot of hype stuff all right I, I remember the milk makeup hydro grip primer the cover effects grippy primer stuff like there's been so many things out there that are super duper hyped and this one oh my god this one like y'all and it's only a couple dollars like I highly even if you hate it it was a couple of dollars but I would be shocked if you hated it because I love this I love this on a spiritual level okay so just throwing it out there worth the hype ripe and hype right here Oh, I love you. All right, so from there we are moving on to Makeup Marvel number three, and that one is titled The Late Bloomer. Now, The Late Bloomer is a product you waited to try and then wished you would have tried it sooner. And this one, oh my God, I can't wait to see the answers that come from this. Like, I, I am so excited. I'm gonna start off by saying, just like the previous product, this one was also a little bit difficult to come up with. But in the end, ultimately, I chose a product that I feel it, it had the perfect amount of everything in my life. Like, it looked beautiful. It was an amazing product on it was super easy to apply it had all the good attributes but it was also something that when I looked at it and I saw other people talk about it and you know love it and oh my god it's so good I disregarded every single one of them okay I wanted nothing to do with them I was like mm -hmm, yeah okay whatever like it sucks it can't be that good y'all 
I tested this out and I've never been the same. This is L'Oreal True Match, okay? <laughs> L'Oreal True Match. And this is one of those products, like again, I've tested out a ton and there are arguably a lot of things that I could put in this spot on this list and you know, they would all work just fine. But this for me is one of those products that I tried it and I truly looked at it and I'm, I'm reading through the question and it says a product you waited to try and then wished you would have tried it sooner literally this okay <laughs> because it was just that product that every time I looked at it I was so snarky hell even the container of it when I would be in the drugstore like I would be you know walking up and down the aisles like oh yeah oh yeah I would get to this and be like what's that joke like oh this doesn't matter and I would just disregard it without even literally without even so much as touching the damn bottle I just didn't think anything of it which by the way I have probably went through god how many bottles I because I've used a couple of different shades and I've probably used up two, I want to say maybe two full bottles. I actually just repurchased this one. This is in the shade N2 Classic Ivory. Uh, but I've went through so much of this. Like, so this is probably one of the most used foundations. And it is also the foundation that I am wearing on my face today. And you can tell, like, it's just such a beautiful, like, it gives beautiful everything. Again, coverage, the, the look on the skin, the way that it settles in, the way that it works with other products. This is just such an MVP type product. And definitely one that when I think about all the parameters, of the late bloomer it's just it, it's you like I, I wished I wish that I would have tried you sooner and that I would have given you a second chance instead of mocking you <laughs> meanly and horribly and ruthlessly in the drugstore every single time that I pass because you're just so good the formula is fantastic it applies great with a brush or a blender however you like to do it and it's just it's absolutely amazing I will say the only stupid part about this product the only thing I have an issue with is this okay <laughs> this whole lid no pump pour it out and hope that you don't you know drip it all over yourself this situation right here is the only thing that I have an issue with that I disagree with um, because I just don't like that type of packaging I wish there was like a little pump that I could screw on there but other than that this product is absolutely fantastic and I highly recommend it and she's my late bloomer. All right, so from there, we're moving on to Makeup Marvel number four, and that one is titled Tentative Tingles, <laughs> and that would be a palette you were on the fence about but now are obsessed with, and this one, whew, this one gives me all the feelings, you guys, because I immediately, like, I mean immediately had an answer for it, and it's relatively recent, but let me tell you, it has never been more true than these Fenty palettes, okay? <laughs> like, I... I can't like words can't even express remember how I just got done saying that I kind of ruthlessly mocked this one here in the drugstore same <laughs> I literally wouldn't go near it I thought oh my god like those are kind of ridiculous like why would I? and why did I think they were ridiculous like truthfully I have no reason they're little like you know six pan palettes I have no reason to think that these are awful or anything but in my head I was just like those are little palettes like I don't fuck with little palettes I only like the big palettes like <laughs> I have no idea where this attitude came from, but apparently I was feeling some kind of way. And uh, then I ended up doing my full face of new Fenty, which I can link up here. And I tested these out and oh my God, you guys, I have been obsessed with them ever since. Like, I think these things are so fantastic. Um, out of the four palettes that I have, I think my favorite here is this one's number seven, their camo palette. And then I also really like number two, if you're into more of like a cool tone with that little pop of purple in it. Um, number two is really awesome and then so is number five this one is the coral one I loved using this one on like a nice light bright kind of day just to give me that pop but still give it just a little bit of flavor just a little something I think universally what I love about these again regardless of which palette I you know I have four of them so I think I can speak pretty nicely as far as the consistency throughout but they all have just a beautiful blend to them as far as the mattes go the shimmers apply really nicely and I think my favorite thing about them again would regardless of which color story you choose is that they each carry with them several eye looks and several uses, several options, all within one six pan palette. And I just really, really like that fact about them because I feel like in today's world, you know, we, we have this huge push for more colors, more options, more this, more that. And when I'm in a hurry, personally, that's not something I want. Like I have no desire for more choices and more options in my day-to-day -day life. I want something that is, you know, it's quick, it's concise, it's easy to deal with. And I just feel like these are that option for me. I guess the long and short of it, it was a no-brainer like this is the palette that I was so tentative about and the whole palette which by the way when I went to film that video I almost didn't even pick up a palette <laughs> because I thought like oh I'm not gonna oh, I don't need one of those Fenty palettes Ugh. and now I'm so glad that I did because I love them and ever since I bought them they have stayed front and center right in like this immediate area because they're so quick they're so simple and they're good and they're consistent and that's what I look for in my makeup and that's what those are boom drop the mic tentative tingles <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> so this one <laughs> this one we're on to 
number five now, and this one is called The Game Changer. Now, we all knew that, a, you know, a product like this was probably coming down the line, and this one I wrote, it is a product that literally changed how you do your makeup or a part of your routine. And then, just for fun, I added my own little, some people wait a lifetime for a moment like this. And you're welcome, <laughs> because I even wrote that in there, complete with the little music notes. So <laughs> I just, I had to sing it for you. Now I'm gonna go ahead and let my uh, my musical prowess rest for just a second, because you guys know I just I love to be melodious. Um, and we're gonna, we're gonna focus on makeup, because this is one of those products for me that, like so many of the other ones, I could have had several options for. I could have done brows, because those have definitely changed. I could have done foundation, because that's changed a lot. You know, there are so many different things. But when I sat down and I thought about, you know, all the makeup that I do and how I do my makeup now, versus how I used to do it, there was one product that really stood out to me as something that from the moment I used it, I was actually just like, I was shocked at how beautiful this product was. And it really did change the way that I do my makeup. And so that is none other than the Huda Beauty Tan Tour Cream Bronzer. And I know that for so many of you that watch my channel, you're gonna be like, what? Wait, hold on. <laughs> what did you just say? Like that, that's the product you chose? It's mainly because I still remember and like it, it still stands out in my my mind as the first moment that I applied a cream bronzer or a cream product in general that worked so beautifully and it, it looked so perfect. Like this one, I applied it for the first time. I remember stamping it and like looking at my monitor and stamping it right in, right into the hollow of my cheek and going, oh my God, like my face. That just changed the shape of my face. And it was the first time that I had used a cream product and it worked exactly as it was supposed to. And it was the perfect tone and the perfect consistency and it blended amazingly. And it was like in this one product, it, it had just dispelled all of the problems and all the worries that I had about ever going in with cream products, especially especially cream bronzers and you know finding that right tone and that perfect consistency and is it going to lift my foundation and I won't be able to blend it and you know just having all of these feelings that were very apprehensive to me and this was that product that after I used it I literally could not use anything else and even now I mean because it doesn't take a lot to use this but you guys I have like used so much of it I mean when this comes <laughs> the pan is full I know big surprise and I have used over half of this and I used it again today and it is just such a beautiful 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 product. The consistency is amazing. The shade range is great. And I just, honestly, for me, this was one of those products that after I laid out my lineup and I, and I was ready to start talking about stuff, this one for me, like it just fit so beautifully because I honestly feel like without having this in my collection and like trying this out for the first time, I honestly don't know if I would look at other cream products the same way. Like I don't know. It's almost like everything that came after this made sense because this one was so good and it was so perfect. All right, so now we're moving on to Makeup Marvel number six, and this one I have titled Lady Lash, and Lady Lash is, quote, the mascara that actually looks like the bitch on the box, and this one, <laughs> I laughed so hard, you can so tell I wrote these, like, that's part of the reason I wanted to read it to you exactly as I wrote it, because, again, it's just, it's dripping with my realness, but this one was really kind of important to me, because I think it drives home, like, the individuality that everybody has, you know, for makeup preference in general, but specifically lashes are one of those things that when you are recommending it to someone, you can recommend your favorite, most amazing, you know, it gives you all the volume and the length and the this, you know, you can recommend something till the cows come home. And if they are looking for thin, natural lashes that give you length, girl, they're not gonna like what you have to say, you know? So it just, it's it's so, everybody has a different lady lash in their, their repertoire of mascara. Some people like to try 100 mascaras. Some people buy the same one for 15 years. Hell, one of my best friends has bought literally the exact same mascara for I think honestly 15 years. It's been all she's used since high school and it's just everybody's lady lash is different. So for today I went through and I went through my entire makeup bin or my mascara bin especially. I've got several mascaras and out of all of them I kept thinking you know what what best represents what I look for in a mascara and this one I had a tie. They are both recent purchases for me but they are two that I think accomplish a very similar and beautiful goal and I love mixing them together which is why I'm introducing both of them for this 
this one. And uh, I think with mascaras, you can do that because, you know, again, you, I think at least for me, I like to mix my mascaras. So I'm introducing both of these to you as my Lady Lash. The first one we have here is from ABH, and this is the Lash Brag Volumizing Mascara. Love everything about this. It gives you the, the bigger, more voluminous, almost chunky lashes. It has that nice full bristle brush, and just the application is really, really nice. And I love this too because it works nicely by itself, or you can pair it with other mascaras. Like, it's just, it's more versatile in that way. But my co-lady lash to that mascara right there, if you will, um, is this little guy, which is the Pat McGrath Fetish Eyes Mascara. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you guys, out of the two of these mascaras, I did think that, you know, there was a better chance I would like the one from ABH, but I was dead set <laughs> against this mascara from Pat McGrath. I was like, I'm not gonna like it. It's not that great, da 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 And I gave myself 101 reasons to not try it. However, once I tried it, yo, I have not been the same. This is what I'm wearing today. It's what I've been wearing, I mean, pr I, probably since I got it. Like, I've, I've played with a couple other mascaras, but I always wanna go back to this one. It's beautiful. It gives me good lash. It gives me good definition. It gives me a little bulk, but not too much. Like, it's not over volumizing, which is, of course, where this one comes in to really just bulk up the lashes a little bit. For me, these are both, like, 100% lady lash. Gives you that bitch on the box look, and I am just, oh, I'm here for it. All right, so we're moving on to number seven. Remember, there's only eight, so I promise we're getting to the end of this. But number seven is the Shine and Dine, and <laughs> what I have written, this is gloss that's shiny without that flypaper effect. In parentheses, sticky as a nasty dicky. <laughs> I just read that out loud. For this one, I don't have to spend a lot of time here, which <laughs> I think makes it even better because if you've watched my channel literally at all, you know that I have two favorite glosses, my two favorite brands, and I was going to choose one for today's video, and then I realized um, I would die. So I didn't want to pick one over the other, so I present to you, again, the two that you know the most often on this channel. We have the Lunar Beauty Gloss and the Fenty Gloss Bob. Now, what I like about introducing these both to you and, and kind of throwing them both out there at once is that they both do share a lot of properties, you know, one with the other. Um, they both have a beautiful application. The shine on them is amazing. Like the, the, the juiciness that they give your lips is fantastic. But I think what sets these apart more than anything else is that consistency that they have. They both, they're, they're so, and part of the reason I even framed it this way in the question, they both carry with them such an amazing non-sticky feel on the lips. Like you can feel them. They have a presence. You, you can tell that they're there, but they're not slippery like an oil and they're not sticky like a cheap, disgusting fly papered gloss. Like they are both just truly so amazing and so comfortable. And when I first started this video and even right now, I had the uh, the Fenty one on because I liked it with the lip liner. Um, I paired it with one of the ones from Wayne Goss. It's down in my drawer. By the way, everything I'm wearing will be linked down below, but I really like this one from Fenty. Um, obviously I love the original too, but this one is in the shade Hot Choco Lit, and I love it just because it has like that brown tinge to it. But I thought given that I already had that one on at the first part, we could apply the Lunar Beauty. Oh my God, it's so good, and it's so thin. And this one is more of just like a clear color with a little bit of sparkle to it. This one is in the shade Celine, and it was released in his newest collection with his blush palette, which by the way is fantastic. I keep it right in front of me because I've used it so freaking much, you guys. This blush palette, I know it's out of stock everywhere I think right now, but if and when this comes back into stock, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be permanent. You, you need it in your life. It's an amazing, amazing blush palette. And, uh, oh, where was I? Oh, yeah, these were released together. I'm like, where was I going with that? But these are both from Manny Lunar Beauty. They're amazing. This gloss is fan-freaking-tastic, and it is 100% worth the hype. 100% worth the hype. So good. And all right, beautiful people, with that, we are officially on to the last makeup marvel, and for that, I bring to you the anti-cake, because <laughs> y'all know I had to have some kind of cake in here. And uh, this one is a powder that sets without being all kinds of doughy nasty on your face. And yes, it is exactly typed just like that, doughy nasty on your face, because ain't nobody got time for that. Nobody wants, nobody wants a cakey powder. Hear me when I say, okay? Nobody wants a cakey powder. Nobody wants to feel like they are wearing plaster of Paris on. <laughs> their skin. For me, this question, when I was, you know, going through and coming up with the products, this one was almost instant. Like, I had two or three powders that had to kind of, you know, vie for attention and, you know, which one is better? What do you like about this one over this one? And they really had to, like, go through some rigorous training. In the end, out of all the choices that I have, I chose the powder that I believe is the anti-cake. It is the powder that I reach for when I'm having a difficult makeup day, that I reach for when I'm in a hurry because I know it'll be amazing. It is that 
powder that if I could only have one powder every single day for the rest of my life, regardless of primer and foundation and everything else, this is the powder that I would say okay to. That is none other than the Hourglass Veil Translucent Powder. You guys, this powder, and I know what you're thinking, we're gonna get there in a second, okay? But this powder is absolutely fantastic. Like I said, I know what you're thinking, so we're just gonna go ahead and get it out of the way. Paige, where is your Maybelline Fit Me? What are you doing? This is the one you talk about. You love it. You rave about it. It's great. It's, it's like the best powder ever. And yes, I still stand by everything I've ever said. This is one of the best setting powders on the market, and I think that it does rival, if not far exceed, a lot of high-end powders. But in the end, I had to go with Hourglass because there have been times, and again, I'm just being honest, just giving you guys my personal feedback here, okay? It doesn't mean this is bad. But there have been times that I've went in with this powder and it doesn't pair as perfectly with all foundations and all concealers and all products as this one does. So for me, I'm kind of looking at it as if I have to go with the, you know, 100% or the 99%, you have to go 100. You know, you, you have to go with the one that, that has worked time and time again and has been that MVP for you. And honestly, out of everything that they both share in similarities, I, I think it is just that little bit of refinement that the Hourglass has one that the Maybelline one does not have. So for me, I am going to be honest enough to say, obviously, you know, yes, this is my MVP. This is my anti-cake. This is that makeup marvel. But at the same time, this one is very much so my Miss Congeniality. It's maybe one or two points lower than my Hourglass. Again, still amazing um, and still good enough to mention, but it does have the tendency or it can, you know, depending on the formulation of your foundation or your primer, it can make you just a touch, um, a touch drier, at least for me, which can lead to that kind of cakey factor on the skin. It doesn't happen often, but it can happen. And with the one from Hourglass, I have not seen that yet. You guys, with that, that is the end of today's video. That is the end of my makeup tag. I hope that you liked it and that you enjoyed it. Um, please be sure to let me know down below if you like this, if you're gonna do it on your channel. And I don't know what you do in situations like this. Like, do you make a playlist? Do people tag them? I'm not, I don't honestly really know how this sort of thing works. Um, I'll probably do like a hashtag makeup marvels or something like that, just so, you know, I can actually find it when I search for them. But you guys, let me know your thoughts and opinions down below. Do you like this? Do you want me to do another tag video, like to write one? Uh, because truthfully, I kind of already started writing one. So <laughs> let me know if you like that. And let me know just all of your thoughts and opinions down below on these products, your favorites in these categories. Um, just anything, anything that you got going on in your head, leave it down below. I would love to hear from you. And of course, before you leave, don't forget you can check me out on Instagram and on Twitter. They will both be linked down in the description box. Um, I'm more active over on Instagram. We hang out in the day to day, talk about my dogs, my cats, you know, <laughs> the huge, whatever. Whatever happens to come in the mail, apparently we talk about that now too. Enter the candle that I just talked about on Instagram from 228. I think it's the Grant Street Candle Co. So good. That one is orchid and sea salt, I want to say something like that. Y'all, these they're like artisanal candles and they are fantastic. Um, I'll make sure it's linked down below so you guys can check it out. It smells amazing. But anyways, as I was saying, check me out Instagram and on Twitter. And of course, if you haven't subscribed yet, please be sure to do that before you leave as well. I put up three new videos a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. They go up around 7 a.m. my time. Um, here in the, it's in the morning, 7 a.m., bright and early, northern Michigan style. Hey, and I don't know what that was. And um, guys, I think that's everything. Thank you all so much for watching, for hanging out with me. I really appreciate it. I hope you liked the video, and I will see you in a video very, very soon. Bye. All right, that is so close to my face. Well, hello, beautiful people. Welcome back. So for today's video, you can obviously sell... Could have, you know, I could have done brows because definitely those have had a transportation... Transportation? But other than that, this product is absolutely fantastic. But other than that, this <laughs> today's video is going to be very different for me. And something that, like, I was kind of nervous about until I talked to Teresa, which we'll get into that in a second. No, we won't. We're going to get into it right fucking now.